Hi everyone, thank you so much for your great questions and I'll get them all answered and um, look at your videos. I've looked at some of the videos and I'm super excited about them. It's uh, such a great topic. And so right now I'm sitting in Connecticut and we're having this awful windstorm. So if you hear wind, that is what is going on. Um, <laughs> I was hoping to get home and get it done before the storm kicked in, but no such luck. So I'm going to start with Sanja's question. Um, two questions about running the exercises. So you only have four jumps in your arsenal and a little too fit of a dog. And I'm laughing because I never got to meet your new Mr. B. Um, since his jumping sequence is below five to 10 jumps, the lecture mentioned, should we do more than three to four reps? And absolutely. So since you're only doing four, you could count it as eight. So have him do four, have him turn around and do another four and then take a break. So you could just double it. Um, so that is fine. And so you can look at the four jumps and increase it to six to eight reps and he may even be able to do some more. So, um, you know, just take a look at how he's doing with everything. And I was laughing, because I can just imagine this, that he prefers flying, so he clears the last two bars in one jump. So it is, as I mentioned in the lecture, a little bit about playing with the, um, the, the distance, and you, if you had to space them out further, that's fine. A lot of dogs, especially with, like for example, four jumps will pick up momentum. So you can absolutely spread the last two jumps to seven feet or further if you have to. So absolutely, great questions there. Looking forward to seeing him. So Donna and your beautiful wild child. Your questions revolve around Leela, um, who has lumbosacral disease. And I've actually worked with her in person, so I'm familiar with her. And she's retired from agility, but she remains very active and has strong core muscles. So I would absolutely do the bungee cord exercise with her. Um, there will be a great benefit for her of continuing to increase her core strength we want to, with her, just make sure we're not having her look up or extending the spine. So I would have her target down low. So keep her spine in a more neutral position um, or looking down. So if she's going for a target, something on the ground. So again, we just want to make sure she's avoiding looking up. With the plyometric grids, now that is really going to depend upon her. If she is fairly active and she does some normal jumping in the backyard, if you wanted to do some low jumps, um, and I would keep it four or five jumps and see how she does, because I am sure she's running around your backyard like crazy and doing all these crazy things. So if she's at all simulating any kind of plyometric activity, I would let her do it. Um, with, uh, Dashiel, I always bash his name, with fibrotic myopathy, um, we do want to be careful that we're not stressing the adductors, um, but he should be fine with both the bungee and the plyometric exercise. I would watch that he is not in an abducted position. Um, so stressing those adductors. So if you can just keep an eye on that. And then your little crackhead, Brixie, um, should do all of the things and she is absolutely fine to go with that. So thank you, Donna. Brandy, so your questions are concerning your Greyhound Jax. He par partially tore his right gracilis, which, yeah, unfortunately is... You see it in a lot of these sight hounds, um, and I'm glad he's fully recovered. He's been overseen by an orthopedic vet who specializes in sports rehab, which is fantastic. Uh, he doesn't participate in any jumping sports and has only participated in his straight running. 
Due to his injury, he'll never participate in full coursing and will only do some straight running on a limited basis. He's pretty comfortable with Cavaletti work already. My goal with this work is just to help him build a strong foundation base. Um, so for him, for jumping, you don't need to jump high at all. So if you know he's your typical greyhound size, I would say set the jumps to start between between 10 and 12 inches. Um, and he definitely, you know, is going to have a long stride. So if you can only get two jumps set up, that is absolutely fine. And we're going to take this just at his pace. So, and the bungee cord exercises are going to be great for him as well. So especially to really stabilize that hind end and, um, and, you know, just further improve the strength of that right gracilis. Thank you, Brandy. So Cine, um, with Cavaletti work, will there be a problem if we have an odd number of bars? Definitely not. So if you have five or seven or six or 10, that is fine. So whatever you have and whatever you can work with. Um, along those similar lines, would it be an issue of concern if a dog always trots through the first bar with the same leg. I'm thinking about how I usually step it on the right rather than the left. Can we potentially correct it for by adjusting the position of the bars? So I don't get too concerned if they're always leading with the same foot. I mean most of the time that tells me for example if they're leading with their right limb that they're right dominant. Um, you can definitely play around with adjusting of the bars. Um, I wouldn't honestly get too crazy about it and worry too much about it. Um, if you're working on a specific activity, if you're trying to get shoulder extension and you really want the dog to start off with the left, you can alter um, the angle of the bar so you can put the left side lower and encourage them to lift through on that that sometimes is fine and then putting balance pads or inflatables between the cavaletti bars for the dog to trot through so this is great to help work on further balance and proprioception i like to do it with dogs that are on a lot of unstable surfaces maybe competing in agility or doing something that they're going to be challenged so um, i'll definitely start with them on land then can progress to the unstable surface so that is absolutely fine and um, does the unstable surface position this way provide more plyometric work for the dog and if the dog is jumping and landing which I think when I was initially talking about the Cavalettis you're getting some more um, range of motion adding the um, adding an unstable surface to the plyometric. So this is, I probably use it in about two to 3% of the dogs. They have to be extremely fit. Most of them are high level Schutzen dogs. Um, every once in a while an agility dog, but it's something that I don't do very often. So continuing with bungee work, sometimes the bungee may inevitably sl slide to one side likely because the dog is reaching forward with one foot. So it's something definitely you want to keep an eye on and make sure that they um, stay equal. Um, you can watch the harness that you're using too. The sled dog harnesses that I recommended usually don't slide, but the regular harnesses will. So you just want to keep an eye on it and certainly if they're going more to the left, then make sure you get the right in there as well. With the jump work, a lot of people are limited with space, and absolutely. And so just like uh, Sanjo was saying, like if you had only three jumps, that is absolutely fine to do. So do what you have and then work up to what you can with um, the level of um, endurance that the dog has. So look at the strength. If you only have three sets, you know, of, uh, you know, only do three sets, five jump. You can do five sets with a three jump or 
you know, whatever. So you could definitely use what you have and then go to your dog's tolerance. So I like to keep it minimal to start. So, you know, maybe only do five sets and then move it up and, you know, just making sure that the dog is doing okay. Anna, so I know you have um, a lot of good questions here. So when you say the dog should be able to do 10 minutes of moderate or harder core work before starting a jumping program, do you count just the accumulate, accumulated work time and therefore exclude rest periods? Um, I count the, um, the accumulated time. So, you know, unless the dog is really, you know, at a higher level. So, um, it's hard for a dog to do 10 minutes from start to finish. I like to have some rest periods in there. So, I mean, if you're just taking brief rest periods, don't worry about it and use your judgment with the 10 minutes. Sylvie, and I think Anna, I'll come back to another one of your questions. Um, I've done many jump grids with my dogs to educate them about jumping. Many, um, many different types of jump grids. Some are compression grids, grids, some are distance grids, all at a low height, except sometimes the last jump is at full height. Your description of the plyometric work sounds like compression grids. And you are correct. So we want the dog, we want to get that coil down there. So um, our difference is going to be just the, the time that we're doing it and how we're pushing it. And your other question, and does the plyometric work differ from regular jump grid training because of the number of reps and how much we're asking the dog to work? And yes, we are. So typically in many jump grids, we're not asking for the number of repetitions. And this is why we need to make sure we have that good break, at least a 48 hour break in between. So because we're training the neuromuscular system, the we need a break you know, in of the dog's body. So you're absolutely correct with the compression grids and just fine tuning it. So if you're used to doing a lot of jump grids, of course, we don't want this to piggyback. So we don't want to do plyometrics and then do another you know, jump, uh, jump grid on a, another day. So Anna, again, regarding your plyometric setup, is there a rule of thumb for starting jump height for dogs who don't do jumping? You mentioned halving the height of a dog jumps in agility, but if we don't have a typical jump height, is there a good rule of thumb? So perfect. This is a great question. So I will usually start at the knee height if they can take that sometimes it's a little bit below so for example really tall dogs um, I'm working with a Rottweiler right now and he's just tall and lanky and he doesn't do agility we're just getting him ready for hiking and I've lowered it his uh, stifle or knee height was 14 inches and we actually started the jumps at 10 um, how much approach and end space should we allow for a jump sequence? Wondering how much of a runway a dog needs. So that dogs shouldn't need too much of a runway because we're having them start from a standing position asking them to jump. They may need more of an end at the end. Um, you know, I wouldn't set the wall, the, the bar near a wall. So making sure that they're you know, not to, um, you know, have enough room. And I would probably say if you looked at the dog, double their, uh, length. So if Sawyer, for example, is four feet in length, give him eight feet. And then regarding the jumping technique on the human versus dog slide, you said dogs often take off with their hind limbs. So if a dog is taking off more with his front limbs, is that fine or should we train the jumping technique? I don't get too picky here. If they're, the hind limbs are going to give us power, but they may be using their front legs more to get over the jump or to get used to things. So initially, I'm not getting too picky with this at all. Um, you may find that more of the compression will start to come from the hind limbs, but just see as they, they go. 
um, when I mentioned that dogs are not good jump candidates. So I'm looking for dogs that they don't have to be um, not involved in sports. Um, but do they just have the coordination? So they can they clear a jump adequately? Um, are they able to just take it easily and, you know, are able to walk over Cavalettis and, like, as I often joke, walk and chew gum at the same time? <laughs> um, so are they just coordinated? Can they get it down? And if I'm unsure, I may start with just a few jumps and then kind of, you know, progress up you know, up with that and just see how they're doing. And of course, making sure, you know, just watch his top line um, and make sure that he's not too tired after. In terms of the program design, how would you fit plyometrics in with other strengthening? Is plyometrics something to do in a, to do solo in a session or can you blend it if the dog is not too fatigued? So great question. And I usually like to combine this with um, my cardio work as long as the dog can handle it. So a dog that's in good shape, we may do five to ten minutes of plyometrics twice a week and combine it on days that they do cardio. So leaving um, the strengthening to the other days. And the, the key here will really be that fatigue factor. What about slow dogs? So if you have a slow dog who doesn't want to approach the jump with a lot of oomph. Um, so that's okay. I mean, that you can try to run alongside the dog. Um, not you take the jumps, but run alongside. And you know, seeing if that speeds them up. Honestly, some dogs are just, eh, they don't want to do it. So if they take it slow, that's fine. You know, we're, we're going to their own... Uh, level. So don't worry too much about it. Then you had mentioned narrowing spacing between jumps to encourage a dog to transition between a quicker landing. If this doesn't do the trick, anything else we may try. And you can certainly um, put, I, with some dogs, um, what the question was, I think Cindy had asked about putting like a disc there to try to get the dog to land and kind of bounce off and to see if that will do it. Um, again, the dog has to be in good shape. You can also try putting the dog on the leash and running with them. Again, you're not going through the jumps, but you're just on the side to see if that will work and assist them. And you talked about starting jumping, not starting jumping too long, but is the dog ever too old? And I think this is really individual, so it's going to depend upon the dog. You know, really looking at um, their, as you indicated, their strength, their flexibility, er, you know, the whole picture. I have an 11-year-old dog I'm working with, a plyometrics with, and he's still very active and hiking and doing great. I had a 7-year-old dog come in today that was just out of shape and owner with all the COVID stuff, the owner's trying to get him back to agility and it's just not going to work. So um, it's really just depending upon the dog there. And then um, talked about doing different plyometrics to target upper body or lower body or core. I think this was when talking about humans though. So can we do this with dogs too? Um, you can certainly. So when you will do this with dogs, we can alter it once you're pretty secure with it and work on um, going uphill or downhill. So if we're working downhill jumping, and I only recommend about a 10 to 15 percent decline, and this will require, you know, a good setup. You can work on the jumping down, so we're getting a little bit more on the forelimbs. Then we can turn it around and do the hind limbs by going uphill. Again, sticking at that same incline. Um, we don't want to go too far. Um, there are a lot of other plyometric activities that we can play around with, with a dog if we're working on more of the core strength. 
and with the bungee and going to different areas. And I had mentioned I'm going to try to cover more work with the bungee cord in um, a whole class. So stay tuned for that. So any other questions, you can always email me. This is my direct email, or you could contact me on Facebook or whatever works. And we'll be in touch. And thank you so much.